I want you to look at social media as a shift in the way that we communicate. Because we're not looking at it as strictly technology, I want you to understand that if you're not utilizing it fully as an individual or as a manager in your company, it doesn't mean you're behind because you're here today and you're open. There are many companies, there are many managers, there are many executive professionals that rather than understand it, they're blocking it, they're pushing it away. So the fact that you're here shows that you're open and really you're not behind the curve. So one thing I do have to share, I wanna make sure that I come out of the closet, okay, and tell you that I actually am a Gen Y. And it took me years to admit this, and here's the reason why. Let people assume I was an ex, because I'm right on the cusp. And the reason why is because I understand that Gen Ys, while we're fueling this technology and it's beneficial, we're actually the reason that most people are confused on social media. We've invented a whole new text language that doesn't involve any vowels, okay? The thing we're teaching you today is not how to go online and tomorrow get tons of new clients. It takes time, I'm, I'll tell them the three C's. When you're on social media, you wanna connect first, then you wanna communicate, and then after that, that's when you convert. You don't need to try to be on all social networks. Your only responsibility is to understand what the goals are that your company's trying to achieve. And then if you see a social network that can help you accomplish that goal, then you can use it. There's a lot of myths surrounding social media. One of the biggest ones is that it's for young people. Social media is for kids. That couldn't be more false. The median age on Twitter is 31. The median age on Facebook is 35. The median age on LinkedIn is 41. These aren't kids. And so when you understand who's on these different social networks, you understand that way more women are on Facebook than LinkedIn. LinkedIn is majority men. As you start to look at whatever your goals are, whether it is to do prospecting, whether it is to connect with current clients and maintain relationships, whether it's to recruit for your HR department, as you start to understand what your goals are, then you can move forward and look at the social networks that best accomplish that. And so I want you to think about, when we talk about research, I want you to think about your industry and where social media is leading us so that you can start to see trends and what people are talking about and what people are doing. And so when you're researching them, you're going to have a lot more data. You want to make sure that you can get found because when people find you, it's almost like, think about when someone's purchasing something from you. When they call you up already knowing that they need you, it's much easier to sell them on your products, service, or yourself than when you're hunting for them. Is that correct? You cannot go on Facebook and Twitter and make it the me show. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's much more social, and it's just like in real life. You don't want to hang out with that person who all day long it's me, 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 me. But LinkedIn is professional. This is where you put all those great things you do, whether it's for your business, whether it's for nonprofits that you volunteer with. So this is where you can brag and it's acceptable. And so when it comes time for that potential client to look at you and your competitor or that future boss to look at you and a competitor, your profile being filled out and having really good content can make the difference. How many people awesome. have ever heard of viral marketing? Like that's, the, that's one of the overused terms of viral. Yeah. Viral just means that you tell one or a couple people your message and they keep spreading it and spreading it and it gets much larger. That's what social media allows you to do. And so when we're looking at Facebook, it's a wonderful engine for that, but most people, you have to connect with those individuals for them to start spreading your brand. And so if you come on just as a page and you don't have that personal profile where you kind of have those connections, it's hard to make that happen unless you're a huge brand like McDonald's. And most of us in here aren't McDonald's. And here's the difference. LinkedIn is about me. Let me show you me. Let me brag about me. To be successful on Facebook, it has to be about you and them and figuring out how to get the me in the you and them. So yes, I'm marketing, I'm social media. But sometimes I'll put a message out there that's a little personal, I mean not revealing too much, because I know it'll draw my friends back in again and they'll start commenting like crazy and then they're going to start looking at me even more. So you can mix a little bit of, of personal, get kind of like that emotional attachment here and there to pull them back. Because if you're all business, you, you think about those friends that you have or those family members that every time you talk to them on the phone, all they do is talk about work. Everyone's blood pressure goes up when you talk about Twitter. Because I think a lot of people see it as being very overwhelming and there's so much to keep track of. And then what happens is most of us when we first got on Twitter, it was because people kept telling you, oh, you should get on Twitter. It's the best thing since sliced bread. Now Twitter is like you being on the radio. There's people that you've heard on the radio, you've never seen them in person. 
You haven't seen their resume, right? You're just judging them by the words that are coming out of their mouth. That's how Twitter works. So if you want to attract your customers, you need to be talking about the things that they're interested in so that they'll find you. If you want to attract people that are at your university or these admissions people, you need to be talking about things that they'll find interesting. Twitter, you're judged based on what you say. I compare that to the radio. There might be times where you hear someone on the radio, you don't see their resume, you don't know what they look like, you don't see them interacting with other people. You're judging, the strict, you're judging them strictly by the words that are coming out of their mouths. If they're giving props to other people, if they mention you on the radio, you love them. If they're giving you resources, you appreciate it. It's all about what comes out of your mouth or what you tweet. You want to make sure yeah. you have a good picture up there. No full bodies or anything like that because you'll be so small you'll look like an ant. Two, you want to make sure that your description really describes who you are. But if you can throw one or two of your keywords in there too, which this is a trick because you only have 160 keywords in the description area of Twitter. So if you can manage to get that in there, when people are searching for any of those words, you're going to pop up higher up. Now in terms of building a following, a few things you want to do. First thing is you want to tag people in your post. You want to tag other influencers. And so if there's people in your industry or they're doing what you want to do, you want to become buddy-buddy with them. And you can repost their messages. You can just talk to them and say, oh my gosh, this is a great article. But you want to make sure you're tagging them. That's using that at sign and then their Twitter name so that they see it and they're more likely to start conversations back. And people who are following them as they're talking back to you, they'll follow the link back to your name and they're going to start to follow you. Um, the next thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you're using proper hashtags. Hashtags are one of the most confusing things about Twitter. That's the thing that looks like the number sign, but for some reason they call it hashtags versus a pound sign. I don't know why. But um, what, what hashtags are is they help you index what your tweet is about. So what that means is if you're talking about something that relates to people who plan events, there's actually a hashtag already for that. So you could type in event planning and you'll start to see tweets and you'll see at the end there's people that are using hashtag event profs. So whenever they talk about anything dealing with event professionals, they put that on the end. If there's late breaking news in Houston, there's a hashtag and you can put Houston um, news, you can type it in and then as it pops up, you'll start to see what hashtags people are already using. They use H-O-U-N-E-W-S, Hugh News. And so if you're posting tweets about it and use that hashtag, People who are following, event professionals that are following the hashtag, or people in Houston that are following Houston News, they're more likely to start following you because they're seeing that you're tweeting about this topic that they're interested in. So hashtags is something that really advanced Twitter users use, but if you can get into the habit of using those now, it can make a huge difference in building a follower. And the last thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you're giving props to other people, that you're saying, you know, this is a great person to follow, on this type of information. You don't want to just do follow this person. You want to say follow this person for information on. And they'll start to do those same things back because when it comes to social media in real life, good people always want to reciprocate. And so if you start showing love to other people and pointing out reputable people, because you know your reputation's on the line, if you start pointing out you know Cousin Bubba and them and they're clowning on Twitter, um, then they'll start returning the favor and then their followers will start following you because they see this person that they admire talking about you.